Makasaysayan at magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Ako nga po pala si Ginoong Francis Hassel N. Pinido, Senior High School Teacher 3 ng Pamplona National High School. Ako nga po pala ay naatasan na talakayin sa inyo ang Bicol Culture, Self-Learning Modules Development, and Quality Assurance. Pero bago ko po simulan ang talakayan, bibigyan po muna natin ng pagpupugay Pasasalamat at pagrespeto ang ating mga butihing mga pinuno ng SDO Kamarimisur. Sa ating SDS, Dr. Lloyda N. Idea. Sa ating tatlong mga butihing mga ASDS, Dr. Lynn Z. Padillo, Dr. Cecil C. Ferro, at Dr. Lauro B. Miliano. Sa ating ring mga mahusay at mga magagaling na chip, CID Chief Dr. Mariben D. Berha, SGOD Chief Sir Peter Pilonio, sa ating mga masisipag na dalawang araling panlipunan coordinators, kay Ma'am Ana N. Kalisura, ang kasalukuyang OIC Education Program Supervisor ng araling panlipunan, sa ating Division Araling Panlipunan Coordinator for Secondary, Ma'am Rosemary Armiranya, sa lahat ng mga Education Program Supervisors, Public Schools District Supervisors, Principals, School Heads, Teacher Writers, Editors, Validators, Reviewers, at lahat ng mga nagkikinig at nanonood ng ating webinar, muli makasaysayan at magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. For the objectives or the targets of our training workshop, the teachers are expected to, so we divided the objectives into two categories, the general and the specific objectives or targets. So first, in the general objectives, we have increased the level of competence of teachers in crafting an innovative and interactive instructional materials. Second, increase the number of school writers and validators in school, district, and in the division level. Third is increase the available instructional materials in Bicol culture and other learning areas. And for the specific objectives, we have first discuss the legal basis of writing and quality assurance of self-learning modules and the parts of the self-learning modules. Second, strengthen the level of competence in writing and validating of instructional materials. And lastly, the third one, develop your own localized and contextualized self-learning modules to be utilized in schools, district, and in the division. Here is the outline of my discussion. So I divided the discussion into three parts. The first part is the discussion on the rationale and the legal basis of module development and quality assurance of vehicle culture. The second part is all about the parts of the self-learning modules. And the third part is the quality assurance of self-learning modules using the self-evaluation guide. Part 1, the rationale and the legal basis of module writing. Under rationale, Schools Division Office of Camarines Sur annually conducting continuous improvement project, focusing on the two essential indicators. First, the level of competence of teachers and the improvement of the school-based management. So let's discuss one by one. The first is all about enhanced teachers' level of competence, specifically the knowledge, the skills, and attitude in developing localized learning resources or materials to be used in their teaching learning process and to become a competent developer and writer based on the training needs assessment conducted. Here are the following uh, teacher's outputs under continuous improvement project. First is the conduct of the action research. 
the making of strategic intervention materials, the crafting of contextualized books, the development of localized modules, the development of prototype daily lesson plan, and crafting other academic innovations. And the second indicator is all about assist schools on the development of mechanism for the improvement of school-based management or SBM level of practice. Here are the legal basis relative to the development of Bicol culture. The first legal basis is the Republic Act number 9548 or also known as the An Act Establishing an Arts and Culture High School in the capital town of Pili, Camarinesur, to be known as the Bicol High School for the Arts and Culture and Appropriating Funds thereof, dated April 17, 2009. The second legal basis is the Regional Memorandum Number 86, Series 2020, the provision of learning resources for the third and fourth quarter in the school year 2020 to 2021, dated November 24, 2020. The third legal basis is the Division Memorandum Number 182, Series 2020, the development of curriculum for Bicol High School for the Arts and Culture, dated July 18, 2020. For the fourth legal basis is the Division Memorandum Number 101, Series 2021, the development of self-learning modules, learning activity sheets, and other instructional materials for Bicol culture dated March 10, 2021. And the last legal basis is the Division Memorandum Number 134, Series 2021, the conduct of the three-day Division Online Training Workshop on the development and quality assurance of instructional materials on Bicol culture dated April 12, 2021. Here is the highlights of the first legal basis relative to Bicol culture writing development. The first is all about the realization of the Republic Act number 9548 or also known as an act of establishing an arts and culture high school in the capital town of Pili, Camarinesur, to be known as Bicol High School for the Arts and culture and appropriating funds thereof was approved in the year 2009. This was conceptualized by the former Congressman Luis R. Villapuerte and facilitated its approval for more than 10 years ago. The school was named Bicol High School for the Arts and Culture and presently housed at the Bicol River Basin Development Project Building located at San Jose Pili Camarinesur. The full support of this project is extended by the concurrent governor, Miguel Luis R. Villaperte, and the vice governor, Imelda Papin, and the former vice governor, Renato Peña of the province of Camarinesur. In line with this, the resolution authorizing governor Miguel Luis R. Villaperte to transact with the DepEd Camarinesur in line with the implementation of the Republic Act number no. 9548 was also initiated by board member Manuel Noble. The second legal basis of the Bicol culture writing is inspired by Regional Memorandum number no. 86, Series 2020, or also known as the Provision of Learning Resources for the third and fourth quarter in the school year 2020 to 2021 dated November 24 to 2020. It is stated in the paragraph A, the ongoing development of self-learning modules for the special curricular program shall continue. The third legal basis is all about the Division Memorandum Number 182 Series 2020 or also known as 
the development of curriculum for Bicol High School for the Arts and Culture, dated July 18, 2020. Here are the objectives of the event under Division Memorandum Number 182 Series 2020 or the development of curriculum for Bicol High School for the Arts and Culture. So actually we have four objectives. The first one is enrich strategic thinking skills for the development of the framework for the special curriculum for Bicol cultural knowledge, skills, and practices. The second objective is all about to maximize ICT skills of the, mo of the participants in the development of the most essential learning competencies for the Bicol cultural knowledge, skills, and practices. And now, here in the third and fourth objectives, here is the realization of the said division memorandum. Objective number three is enhance probing skills of the teacher writers in unpacking of the most essential learning competency for the Bicol cultural knowledge, skills, and practices. And for the fourth objective, improve the learning action cell members' writing skills in the identification of appropriate teaching and learning methodologies, strategies, activities, and assessment for the effective transfer of learning. So actually, my dear participants, under objective three and four are our basis why we are writing the Bicol culture modules. For the fourth legal basis, the Division Memorandum Number 101, Series 2021, or also known as the Development of Self-Learning Modules, Learning Activity Sheets, and or other instructional materials for Bicol culture, dated March 10, 2021. In line with the Division Memorandum Number 101, Series 2021, is the approval of the Division CI project of the SDO Camerini Sur under CID is the realization of the Project Magsurat. And what is this Project Magsurat? It is the mobilizing and administering goals towards sustainable utilization of learning resources for vehicle culture, knowledge, skills, and practices which are accessible for teachers. So this is the approved proposal of Ma'am Mariben Berha and yours truly. So that is the reason why, why we are writing the Bicol Culture Self-Learning Modules Development and also the quality assurance of the said self-learning modules. Under the project proposal of the Project Magsurat, here are the objectives to be achieved in line with the capacity building on the validation of modules in the schools and district level in SDO Camarinisur. So the first objective of this project is increase the available learning resources in Bicol culture knowledge, skills, practices, and core learning subjects in K-12 program. The second objective is all about increase the available number of writers and validators from schools and district. The third objective of the project is enhance critical thinking skills of the members of the school and district validation teams. The fourth one is enrich technical writing competencies of the participants in accomplishing the different validation tools. And lastly, showcase the teamwork spirit of school and district stakeholders in organizing their school and district validation team. For the fifth legal basis of the said Bicol Culture Writing Development is the Division Memorandum Number 134, Series 2021, or also known as the conduct of the three-day division online training workshop on the development and quality assurance of instructional materials on Bicol culture dated April 12, 2021. So for the information of everyone, especially those writers and validators 
of the different instruction materials relative to Bicol culture. So this division memorandum number 134 is our current legal basis why we are conducting the said training workshop for 3D. We are now in the second part, the parts of the self-learning module. Our reference in the parts of the self-learning module is the Regional Memorandum Number 36, Series 2020, or also known as the Regional Learning Continuity Tasks and Guidelines, wherein they gave us the essential parts to be followed in writing the module. So as you can see, here are the regional design or parts enumerated based on regional memorandum number 36. So the first part is the front cover. The second part is the copyright page or the RA8293 statement. The third part is the title of the material wherein you can locate the introduction. The fourth part is the objectives, wherein you can see the most essential learning competencies. The fifth part is the vocabulary list. The sixth part is the pretest. The seventh part is the learning activities, wherein you can see the lecture of the lesson. The eighth part is the practice tasks, wherein you can see the three tasks or activities. The ninth part is the post-test. The tenth part is the assignments or the additional activities. And lastly, the eleventh part is the answer key. Okay, so here the division of Camarinesur uh, also created a localized division initiated SLMs. In particular, they refer their parts of self-learning modules in the regional design. So in the localized division initiated, they created three types of modules written in Filipino, in English, and in mother tongue base or in Bicol. So as you can see on the screen, most of the, the parts are the same. They are different only in the language used. So they have the same front cover and copyright page. So in the title of the material or introduction, so in Filipino, it's written in Panimula. So in English, it is what I need to know. In mother tongue base, it is pagpuon. So in the fourth part, the objectives, it is mga layunin, wherein you can see the most essential learning competency, the MEL code, and the unpacking of the most essential learning competencies. So in Filipino, it is mga layunin. So in English, it is objectives. And in mother tongue base, it is mga katuyuhan. So in the fifth part, the vocabulary list in Filipino, it is talahulugan. So as is in English, it is vocabulary list. In mother tongue base, it is aramunta. In the sixth part of the module, it is the pretest. So in Filipino, it is panimulang pagsubo. In English, it is what I know. In mother tongue base, it is pagpuon na examen. In the seventh part of the module, it is the learning activity. So in Filipino, you can see the balikan, tuklasin, and mga gawain sa pagkatuto. So in English, what's in, what's new, and what is it. And under mother tongue base, it is mga gibuon sa pagkanoon. And under part 8 of the self-learning modules, wherein you can see the 
three tasks. So in Filipino, it is written as pagyamanin, pagsasanay one, pagsasanay two, and pagsasanay three. Isa isip and isa gawa. And for English, it is what's more. We're in under what's more. We have the practice task one, practice task two, and practice task three. Also, it has what I have learned and what I can do. For mother tongue base, so it's only have gibuhon one, gibuhon two, and gibuhon three. For the ninth part, under post test in Filipino, it is pangwakas na pagsubok. However, in English, it is what's the score? And for the mother tongue base, it is pantapos na pagpulbar. And for the tenth part, it is the assignment or the additional activities. In Filipino, it is written as karagdagang gawain and karagdagang gawain sa pagbasa o pagsulat. And for in English, it is what's more to do and the additional activities in reading or writing. And for mother tongue base, it is dugang na gibuhon. For the 11th part, the answer key. So in Filipino, it is susi sa pagwawasto. In English, it is the answer key as is mother tongue base. It is giya sa pagtama. And for the references, for the 12th part of the parts of the learning module, for Filipino, it is sanggunian. For English, it is what are my sources. For mother tongue base, it is susugan. And also, in this part of the learning modules, we added patungkol sa may akda for Filipino about the author for English and dapit sa author in mother tongue base. So don't worry, fellow participants, we will discuss it one by one. For the cover page, here is the sample cover page for grade 7 Bicol Culture. So you can see the quarter 1, module 2, traditional na pamamaraan ng panggagamot. So in the middle part of this cover page, you will see the different icons or Bicolano icons referring to our culture. Okay, so sa ikalawang bahagi ng module, matatagpuan natin ang copyright page kung saan makikita yung mga pahayag patungkol sa Republic Act number 8293. Sa pahina rin ito, matatagpuan o makikita ang mga bumubuo sa pagsusulat ng module. So dito natin matatagpuan ang pangalan ni writer, pangalan ng editor, maging ito ay sa language, content, at nandito rin matatagpuan ang pangalan ng tagasuri o yung reviewer at validator natin. Dito rin matatagpuan ang pangalan ng ating tagaguhit or illustrator at tagalapat o layout editor. Para naman sa ikatlong bahagi ng ating module, ito ay ang panimula na kung saan nandito makikita ang kabuang ideya, paksa, layunin ng module na aaralin ng bata sa buong linggo. Dito rin nakasulat ng simple at madaling maintindihan. Hindi ito bababa sa limang pangusap. Nandito ang isang halimbawa ng isang panimula, ang Module 6 na may pamagat, tradisyonal na pamamaraan ng panggagamot ng mga Bicolano. Magandang araw! Kumusta ka? Handa ka na ba sa bago nating aralin? Tara at simulan na natin! May mga tradisyonal na pamamaraan ng panggagamot ang mga Bicolano na patuloy na isinasagawa hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Ito'y para sa agarang lunas sa karamdaman. Sa module na ito, matututunan mo kung ano-ano ang mga tradisyonal na pamamaraan ng panggagamot ng mga Bicolano at kung paano ito ginagawa. 
para naman sa ikaapat na bahagi ng module ay ang pagsulat ng mga layunin. Sa pagsulat ng mga layunin, ito ay kinakailangang nakabatay sa most essential learning competency o kilala bilang pinakamahalagang kasanayang pampagkatuto na kung saan idinaragdag rin natin ang kanyang MEL code. Kasabay nito ay sumusulat din tayo ng mga tatlo pang mga layunin at ang mga tatlong layunin ito ay naka-unpack o nakabahagi-bahagi. Samantala, sa pagsulat naman ng mga layunin, kinakailangan nating sundin ang mga forma ng pagsulat nito. Ito ay naka-CAP format, Cognitive, Affective, at Psychomotor. Sa Cognitive, knowledge o kaalaman ang ating hinuhubog sa ating mga estudyante. Sa affective naman ay ang attitude o karakter o pag-uugali ang hinuhubog natin. Samantala, sa psychomotor naman or skills o kasanayan ang ating hinuhubog sa ating mga estudyante. Narito ang isang halimbawa ng paggawa ng layunin. Ang halimbawa dito ng MERC ay na ilalarawan ang tradisyonal na panggagamot ng mga bikulano upang mapabuti ang kanilang kalusugan katulad ng bentusa, tradisyonal na hilot, santiguar at iba pa. Ang naging mga layunin naman ng manunulat na ito ay pagkatapos ng aralin ito, ikaw ay inaasahang una na ipapaliwanag ang wastong pamamaraan kung paano ginagawa ang tradisyonal na pangunahing lunas katulad ng bentusa, tradisyonal na hilot, santiguar, gamit ang mga halamang gamot. Ikalawa, napapahalagahan ang papel na ginagampanan ng mga tradisyonal na manggagamot upang mapabuti ang kalusugan ng mga bikulano. At pangatlo, na ipapakita kung paano inihahanda ang mga halamang gamot upang gawing pangunang lunas. Para naman sa ikalimang bahagi ng ating module ay ang talahulugan. Sa pagsulat naman ng talahulugan, kinakailangan ito ay naka-alphabetical order. Kinakailangan rin na ang mga salitang ito ay kinakailangan bigyang pagpapakahulugan para madaling maunawaan ang mga teknikal na salita sa loob ng module. Maaaring kumuha sa mga diksyonaryo at maaari rin gawan ito ng sariling pagpapakaulugan, ngunit kinakailangang ito ay may pinagbatayan. Sa ika-anim na bahagi ng ating module ay ang pagsulat ng panimulang pagsubok o pretest. Sa pagsulat ng mga panimulang pagsubok, kinakailangan nating isaalang-alang ang mga bagay na ito. So kinakailangan na ang pagsusulat ng pretest ay ito ay nakasulat sa multiple choice na may apat na pilian or options. Kinakailangan na mayroong limang items kung ito ay nasa grado isa hanggang tatlo sa elementarya. Sampung items naman sa grado apat hanggang anim. Ito pa rin ay kasama sa elementarya. Samantala, sampung items naman para sa sekundarya sa grado 7 hanggang labing dalawa. Kinakailangan na nakasulat ito batay sa layunin pa rin ng ating module. Ito ay laging makikitang naka-anpa. Ito ay naka-angkla sa psychological unfolding format. Sa pretest, kinakailangan nating from easy to average. Kinakailangan ito ay nakasulat ng analytic, situational, at higher order thinking skills ang ating inuhubog sa ating mga estudyante. Sa pagsulat ng module, kinakailangan na mayroon itong balikan. Ang balikan ay isang gawaing nagbabalik-aral sa huling aralin, ngunit may kaugnayan sa bagong aralin, na kung saan, ang mga gawain dito ay tumutugon kung natutunan ba pa rin ng mga bata ang mga kaalaman at kasanayan sa huling aralin ng module. 
Pagkatapos magbalik-aral, nandito naman tayo sa bahagi na kung saan kinakailangan natin isulat sa ating module yung bahagi para sa tuklasin. Ang tuklasin ay ang mga gawaing magsisilbing motibasyon sa bagong aralin. Maaari tayong maglagay ng mga mini lecture para sa pag-uugnay sa bagong aralin. Makikita sa ating screen ang halimbawa ng isang gawain para sa tuklasin. Para naman sa mga gawain sa pagkatuto, sa pagsulat naman ng bahaging ito, kinakailangang isaalang-alang natin ang mga sumusunod na mga bagay. Kinakailangan na ang gawain ito ay magsisilbing lecture o talakayan sa module. Dito rin mababasa ng bata ang kinakailangang kaalaman na maghahanda sa mga pagsasanay sa module. At kinakailangan na ang mga gawain sa pagkatuto ay galing sa ating mga open educational resources. Karagdagan sa mga gawain sa pagkatuto sa pagsulat ng mga talakayan o mga bahagi na kung saan maaari nating gawing talakayan sa ating mga module, ito ang mga minumungkahi na pwede nating pagkunan ng ating sanggunian. Una ay ang mga OERs o Open Educational Resources na ibinigay sa atin ni DepEd. Maaari rin na ang mga ito ay nasa internet at ang mga ito ay mga nagtatapos sa .edu. Maaari rin natin pagkunan ang mga materyales sa DepEd Commons. Maaari rin natin pagkunan ang mga Creative Commons or Free Encyclopedia katulad ng Wikipedia at Wikimedia. Maging mapanuri na lamang tayo kung ang mga datos na nandito ay talagang napapanahon o hindi. Sa pang-apat na maaari natin pagkunan ay ang mga government site na kung saan ang mga government site na ito sa internet ay mga nagtatapos sa .gov.ph. Tandaan, maging mapanuri pa rin palagi. Ang panglima na maaari natin pagkunan ay ang mga sarili nating gawa na kung saan ang mga ito ay kinakailangang nakabatay pa rin sa most essential learning competency. Para naman sa pagyamanin at pagsasanay, ito ang mga mahalagang impormasyon na kinakailangan nating matutunan sa pagsusulat ng bahaging ito. Tandaan natin na ito ay ang mga gawaing pangkalaman at pangkasanayan na magsasanay sa bata para may sakatuparan ang layunin na nakasulat sa most essential learning competency. Tandaan natin na ang ating mga layunin ay mayroong tatlo. Tatlo na kung saan ang huhubog sa mga bata para sila ay sanayin. Tandaan, sa pagsulat ng pagsasanay 1 ay kinakailangan ito ay naka-cognitive or knowledge base. Ang hinuhubog dito ay ang kaalaman ng bata. Samantala, sa pagsasanay ito naman ay ang affective or ang attitude base ang ating dinidevelop, ang kanilang karakter. Samantala, sa pagsasanay 3 naman ay ang psychomotor or skill o ang kanilang kasanayan ang kanilang hinuhubog para matutunan ang mga aralin. Matapos ang mga pagsasanay, ang susunod na bahagi ay patungkol naman sa isa-isip. Sa isa-isip, dito matutunghaya natin ang mga gawain magbibigay pagbubuod o paglalahat ng mga natutunan sa ating module. Maaari rin na maglagay ng mga mini lecture or outline ng mga mahalagang kaalaman at kasanayan sa araling ito. Sunod naman ang isagawa. Ang isagawa ay ang mga gawaing magsisilbing aplikasyon ng natutunan sa aralin. Kung ito ay performance task, kinakailangang may rubric o kriteriya. Para naman sa pagsulat ng pangwakas na pagsubok o post-test, kinakailangan ulit natin bigyan ng pagsasalang-alang kung paano nyo ginawa ang inyong pre-test. Tandaan, sa pagsulat ng post-test ay kinakailangan ulit ito ay nakasulat sa multiple choice. 
na merong apat na options. Muli, ito ay may limang items para sa grado 1 hanggang 3. Sampung items naman para sa grado 4 hanggang 6. At sampung items ulit para naman sa grado 7 hanggang 12. Nakasulat pa rin ito na kabatay sa layunin ng ating most essential learning competency. Dito natin matutunghayan kung sa paraan ng pangapagsubok ay naka-align pa rin ang ating most essential learning competency. Ito rin ay nakaangkla sa psychological unfolding format na kung saan sa post-test, ito na ay naka-average to difficult level. Kanina, sa pre-test, ito ay naka-easy to average. Kung nagsulat ka ng limang items na easy at limang items na average sa pre-test, sa post-test, yung limang items na easy, gagawin mo na siyang average. Samantala, yung sinulat mo naman na average sa pre-test, ay gagawin mo naman siyang difficult. Muli, ito ay nakasulat pa rin sa analytic, situational, at nagde-develop ng higher order thinking skills ng ating mga estudyante. Matapos ang mga pagsasanay at mga pagsusubok, susunod naman ang mga bahagi para naman sa karagdagang gawain o mga karagdagang gawain sa pagbasa o pagsulat. Dito natin matutunghayan ang mga gawaing magsisilbing enrichment o pagpapayaman ng kaalaman o kasanayan ng ating mga estudyante. Ito rin ay maaaring nakasulat sa performance task. At kung ito ay performance task, kinakailangan pa rin natin lagyan ito ng rubric at criteria. Sunod naman ay ang susi sa pagwawasto. Sa pagsulat naman ng mga susi sa pagwawasto, ito ay isang pahina na magsisilbing gabay sa mga pagwawasto sa mga ginawang pagtataya at pagsasanay ng bata sa module. So kinakailangan nating isulat pa rin ito sa isa o hanggang dalawang pahina. Ang sanggunian ay ang pahina na kung saan ilalagay ang lahat ng mga pinagunang sanggunian. Ang citation format na ating sinusunod ay naka-Chicago. At ang mga lahat ng mga link ng pinagunan sa OERs, Creative Commons, Government Sites, at ano pa mang mga ginamit na materyales para makatulong sa paggawa ng module ay ilalagay sa sanggunian. Para naman sa huling bahagi ng ating module ay ang patungkol sa may akda. Ito ay ang pahina na nakasulat ang mga mahalagang impormasyon patungkol sa may akda na hanggang 55 na salita lamang. Ang ating ginamit na module sa training workshop na ito ay isinulat ng ating mahusay na manunulat na si Sir Newman M. Riba ng Adyangao Elementary School, Adyangao San Jose, Kamarinisur ng Partido District. Thank you, Sir! Maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig mga kapwa ko guro. Patuloy natin ialay ang ating dedikasyon sa pagridang ng mga makabago at makabuluhang pamamaraang pampagkatuto upang ang edukasyon ay maging interaktibo, inovatibo at epektibo sa ating mga mag-aaral na handa sa mga pagbabago at hatid ay kaalaman karunungan at kasanayang angkop sa ikadalawampu't isang siglo. Muli, maraming salamat.